would you say it's profitable for someone to farm cassava? It's profitable. Now every farm produce is profitable. Why do you say so, now every farm produce is profitable? Because of the pricing or what? Pricing and it's like food has been something that you can't do away with it. So it's profitable. For this current economic situation, it's very profitable. And you yourself, it will help you because we complain about cost of food and all that. If you have it, how are you going to buy? You're not going to buy it, so you save that money. So it will help you. Like, I always say, at least try to do a home garden or something. Oh, like, this thing. Hmm. It has been something that I always say, so it has been very profitable. What's going guys? Welcome back to another exciting farm week in Ghana. If today is your first time seeing me, I'm Charles and on this channel we talk about agriculture here in Africa. Um, today I'm at in, San, in Sawim, um, in a, at Alata. There's a community here that I get to visit. Um, a young individual who is into farming. He mainly farms cassava. He does other things as well. I get to, going to do, get to know more about him as we get into the video. I'm excited for this video because I always get happy when I see other colleagues or young people who are also interested in farming. So yeah, I just got alighted at the place. We are going to his end. So we get into the video to get to know more about him, how his journey began, how he started, and how it has been um, farming cassava for this long. So yeah, join me as we get into the video. Chief, what's up? Shop, 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 shop. So yeah, exactly. Where's this place? The name of this place is exactly. Alata, Alata Obodai. Alata Obodai. Yeah. So like when you get to the inside then you come yeah. to this place. Yeah. Eh? Pick a car, go into a brew or Okay, yeah. okay, okay, sure. So yeah, then as we get into the video. So, um, I'm here with KD. I had to look at, um, get to know him a bit. I know how he started this cassava farm and how the journey has been. Um, so me, I know you ask KD. Um, can you introduce yourself to my viewers? Oh, my name is Henry and you're Puku. Okay. But I like the KD comes from my my name, Dentra and Kweku. Your name what? Dentra. Dentra. And Kweku. So ah, okay, KD. Kweku Dentra. So KD. Oh, nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. That is how I coined that name. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So like, um, how did the whole journey begin for you? Because I know you are into cassava farm. I said cassava. Yeah. What, what else do you do? Um, uh, coconuts, um, sugar cane, sugar cane and too. pineapple farm. Oh, nice. Yeah, pineapple farm. But, but the pineapple farm, my uncle. Yeah, my uncle does the pineapple farm. And my brother too does the pineapple farm. And the coconut to my grandfather. But we help him in planting and all that. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, like the so, whole business, the whole family, everyone has something. Something yeah, that they like. Here is a farming area. We do in a lot of farming, and, like food stops, so planting all those stops. Ah, for me, uh, yeah. So for those watching us, we are in Sawum, uh, Pukrum, right? Obodai Alata. Obodai Alata. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Here yes. is a grape from south. Yeah. Okay. A grape from south. So like mainly in this area, what do people normally farm here? Cassava and pineapple. Like pineapple has been something that is known here. Okay, yeah. Let's okay. Okay. That's fine. So um, let's get to know a little bit about KD um, um, before farming, before um, this whole thing. Oh. So who is KD? Do you describe yourself? Oh, KD is a young guy, like a very cool person, shy. But I'm comfortable with you. That is when you see me talking. If okay. I'm comfortable with you, when that is when you see me talking. And like I'm very private too. I'm very private. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm very private, and I love music. You love music too. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Like I love music and DJing. So. So is it like something you do on a part time or something? I I do on a part time, and like I love someone who plays music. So. Anything about music, I love it. Yeah. Okay, let me ask. So, who's your favorite musician in Ghana? Oh, to Sarkodie. Sarkodie is my nice, favorite nice. musician. At least, you see, if you have to mention any other artist, we're <laughs> not 40 here, yeah, but yeah, once you mention Sarkodie, we are good to move. Okay, so like, um, growing up, how was it like? Um, was it like you grew up here in the farming community that inspired you to become a farmer or how? Yeah, I grew up here. 
I grew up here, took class five. I attended from K to class five here. Okay. Then I went to Insaum to continue my education. So I completed JHS at Insaum. Okay. Then after then, I went to Koforidia Methodist Senior High School or Eco Methodist. Okay. Yeah. So after completion of the SHS, then I went to Accra. So Accra was it like to work to school? Yeah, to work and to school. But things hasn't been well, so I decided to do farming and at the same time work. To support yeah. what you do. And I sometimes to do clothing. Clothing? What type yeah. of clothing? Like men clothing, jeans and tops and uh, long sleeves and all that. Oh, I okay. grew in that too. Sure, sure. But that, that one has been like a part time something. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. But like the main focus now is what? I do work. I work. I work with a pension house, and the farming has been my part time something. Okay. So okay. whenever I get the time, I just pass through them. Sharp, sharp, sharp. So if you are, if you want a plug for your men's clothing and stuff, you can contact him. The details will be in the description. At least for your clothing and stuff that you need to wear. Okay. So um, what what I know you say you grew up here in a farming community. But what inspired you to say okay, I want to go into cassava farming. I want to start farming. When I went to Accra. Like, I saw that in Accra, cassava is very costly over there. Like, yes. foodstuffs are Generally, very costly. Generally, like, it's, it's crazy. So, someone will go and buy cassava or, like, foodstuffs, and it will be, like, something that I know for a year. I will buy it, like, five CD or two CDs. That will be plenty. For Accra, very small, and it will be for a lot of money. And I was like, ah, why? So... I came here, I came here one time and I was like, Grandpa, I want to start farming. So he told me, if you do it, then he just showed me where I should just do the farm because he has the land. So okay. he just showed me where I should do it. Then I did the first farm, but I didn't pay attention to it. Like I wasn't coming here often, so that one didn't go well. But at least I got something out of it. Sure. And when was this? About two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Okay. I got something out of it, and we did a second one. That one day, I paid attention to it, and I even extended it. Bye oh, bye. Okay. My my auntie was supporting me, so even if I'm not here, he will be doing all the farming work okay. and all that. I'll just send her some money then. She will follow. Uh, she will get people that who weed and all that and spraying like we decided and all that so okay she will be helping me out then i'll be calling her and asking how far how has it been going and all that oh nice even when you oh, came nice. you remember she was saying yeah that yeah, is yeah, a farm yeah, yeah. okay so okay. but i said you extended it so it means first when you decided to farm how many acres did you farm on it wasn't acres it was we say two rows oh, and one yeah and how, how what does it mean it, it, they have a way of measuring i think 12 by 12 okay yeah 12 okay. by 12 so they 12 by 12 twice that is how i did it sure sure sure, uh, sure, sure. then later you expanded it yeah i expanded it to four i expanded it to four and now it's about half an acre okay yeah, it's okay. about half an acre for now nice yeah. man then I mean, there's been progress there's been progress there's been progress. Okay, so we would go to the farm and look at what he does. Um, get to know what the two rooms, uh, two rooms he's talking rooms. about. Yes, and get to also learn something. Cause this is my first time hearing that. Uh, so maybe it's a it's a jargon when it comes to cassava farming or yeah. something. Or like in here is Akan community, so we say Ahoma Bako, Ahoma Minu. Oh, okay. That, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So if you know what he's talking about, please uh, let me know in the comment section, so we, we get that. Oh, nice, nice. So um. Starting, I'd say it has been easy um, combining being away and doing it. How are you been able to manage it? Has it been easy doing it? It has been easy for my auntie helping me. So even if I'm not around or if I'm not able to come here, I know someone is definitely <laughs> checking up, checking on, up on, on it and giving me all the feedback. So it has been easy. It has okay. been easy. Yeah. That's nice. So I want to know, um, being, being into farming for like, I mean, two years ago, so yes, yeah. for two years now. What is your general um, 
perspective about farming? Oh, farming is very good. Farming is very good. And one thing I love about farming is it feeds you and it feeds people around you. Mm-hmm. You let's put the money aspect aside. Aspect aside. Yeah, it feeds you. Like for about two years now, whenever I come here, I'll get food to go to Accra, give some to my grandparents and like some of my tenants and they will be like hey into kre kra o nyina we da so ye fu o ye ye juma wa kra o sign ye fu so a lot of people didn't know i was farming so one one grandma i went and gave her some of the farm produce and she was like hey into the journey be be ba ya o ko nya na because the grandma me ye fu she me kwa kra me kwa ye fu and say hey why are you and so like it motivated me to do more and whenever i go to the farm and i see how the produce or the crops has been very green and very nice it gives me a lot of motivation like i feel very proud sure sure sure, sure. i like I, i like that um so i want to know what has been the major challenge when it comes to like um what you do like growing cassava or farming it so the challenge has been uh we decide like the cost of we decide now it's very costly mm. and like it has been very costly and the person that will do the we decide to for you or the person that will you will get so that you'll be weeding around the farm produce too it seems like nowadays here is fast developing so farming has been something that people are not paying attention to everybody like in this area to, yeah everybody wants to go to school and all that so if you are farming and you want someone who will be weeding around and all that now it has been difficult for some time now It's like getting people who can help that you farm who can help you even you paying them you pay them so that they will weed for you it will not be easy so sometimes you need to come and do it for yourself like well, for now I'm only education should be the problem the people can um to school but maybe they can find that as a side as to also get something for themselves yeah oh. but at first at first like someone will not go to school you you get the person who will be working each and every day for you and it seems like nowadays to the youth yeah they don't like working on the farm like a lot of them want to do one or two things get quick money and all that so mm. working on the farm is not something like they like most yeah, the youths and like the people that are in this area for now at first they that is the only thing so everybody will be going to farm like if you wake up you go to the farm you come up to the house then maybe in the evening to you go back again but nowadays it's not like that because mm-hmm. here has changed like here has changed so Sure, sure, sure. So, um, the weed decides. What is uh, what was the pr- initial price now, like before and like now? Maybe that was the price now. Well, at first, it was like twenty cities, twenty cities you could get weed decide, even fifteen cities, and the one that it will cost much will be like thirty cities. But now, ninety cities, seventy cities, even hundred cities. It's 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 crazy. Like yeah. the inflation in Ghana is is. Uh, I don't know. I don't know you what to say. Generally things are expensive in Ghana. Like from very, very. food to what have you? Like just name it. Everything is quite expensive now. So yeah, I understand. I understand. Maybe when, as time goes on, uh, the economy will get better. We, I hope the economy get better. We we'll live to see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll Another we'll interesting see. part. You see now we are going to buy something. People are like, "Oh, on a dollar, so things are expensive and stuff." Yeah, and But that one too, dollar will affect it because we don't produce. We don't produce. We import it. Yes. Yeah. But my main point is, if the dollar comes down or the economy gets better, these prices don't go down. No. It remains where it is. Ghanaian markets does not make price to go down. You know. It will be stable. It will never go down. That's that's like the sad aspect. Um, we have to like make a conscious effort to push that. Once things go back to normal, all these prices have to come down. But if the fuel prices and stuff will definitely drop, but yeah. like you see this meat and stuff, they will not they will not bring down down their prices. They will still maintain the prices that they have. So I, I feel like yeah, once the economy starts to get back on its feet, there has to be like a serious agenda to make sure that all these things go down. Okay, let's dive into cassava farming. Would you say it's profitable for someone to farm cassava? It's profitable. 
Now every farm produce is profitable. Why do you say so, now every farm produce is profitable? Because of the pricing or what? Pricing and it's like food has been something that you can't do away with it. So it's profitable. For this current economic situation, it's very profitable. And you yourself, it will help you because we complain about cost of food and all that. If you have it, how are you going to buy? You're not going to buy it, so you save that money. So it will help you. Like, I always say, at least try to do a home garden or something. Oh, like, this thing. Hmm. It has been something that I always say. So it has been very profitable. I get some that I will eat and some that I will sell. I, For now, if you go to the market, they will give you like four or five cassavas, like five cities or something. Even that one cry, mostly the ones that come to Accra is not that right. You cook it and yeah. you throw a lot and even we, when you are using it to prepare fufu and all that. So that's the way, that, the way it annoys me. You and buy cassava, you boil it and <laughs> almost majority of it will be spot. Like I, I mean and, I wish there was a way we could identify it right at the point of buying it. And one thing is you will not get like fresh ones too. It will be there like three days, four days mm. and but when you are farming for yourself, you always get fresh cassava or like fresh farm produce to eat. So it's very profitable. Yeah. The aspect about home garden, I have a video on home garden, so you can go and check it out and get to learn something about it. Like, I believe at this point in time, every one of us should have like a garden of our own. At your backyard, you can plant something, some uh, vegetables, tomatoes. All these things you can plant at your backyard. Yeah, even and if you plug in them. Child, your home or like or whatever uh, pavement blocks or whatever you can get the bags or yeah, the the put it in small or pots tie yeah or something yeah. you can do you put in soil then you do something exactly and it to, it to germinate like to we are blessed that in such a way that everything you grow in this country yeah, grows so once you get the right soil a lobby soil and you do your own home garden yeah it to germinate it to germinate Okay, so um, we are almost about to wrap up, uh, so that we go and go and look at the, the cassava farm. But I want to ask, um, would you tell or would you advise the youth to go into farming? Oh, definitely. I will always do that. I will always do that. I will always do that. I've been I've been on Twitter for some time, and one one man that every youth in Ghana know, John DiMello. Yeah. He's always into farming, like talking about farming and you could see the result that he's producing and it's very great. It's very good. Whenever I see any of his posts, like I become very, very motivated about it. Sharp, sharp. Yeah. Um John DiMello, if you're watching me, I've been trying to get you on this channel. Please this is the channel that all the youth that farm are on. So please you just reply to my DMs and my emails. I've been sending emails for some time now. The guy is not minding me. You, so please, <laughs> if you're watching me, if you can just add him or something, you. or draw his attention that, yes, I need him on the channel. Because more people are being motivated. I visited a rice farm some time ago. The guy was like, yeah, he keeps on farming because he believes farming in the, in the future. And John DeMello inspires him to continue with what he's doing. I see uh, John DeMello as my role model because he has been in the movie industry for so long. And then seeing him getting into uh, farming and then doing so well to you know produce uh, the kind of uh, goods he produce to feed the country if you are a youth and you like you have vision like you have in mind to start or to get into rice farming you shouldn't like you shouldn't fear they, they get it so yeah john please if you're watching this let, let's make a date and make this happen okay so if there's any advice we give to the youth who who are not you know i'm an employment aside who are not finding jobs to do and stuff what would the advice be oh the advice that i'll give is if you have access to land because land has been something that will like it will hinder you if you want to go into farming if you don't have the money to buy the land it will be a problem yeah. so yeah. if you have access to land that one day you need to even if it's one row or like a, 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 like a single room plot of land that you get, you can use it to farm. Yeah. Even if you grow something, one on it, it will definitely yield for you to get something out of it. Yeah. So yeah. 
And the reason why the backyard is important is you can start with the backyard and be growing small. small. Once you see we are getting, we are seeing progress. You can maybe start on a bigger land or a bigger scale. One scale. thing is you can even collaborate with friends. Maybe exactly yeah, four or five people. Definitely one of the friend will be like, I know someone who can get us a land or something. Yeah, yeah. You can just gather, then you go for the farm, then you farm. Me recently, I'm planning with my friend. We want to do one at uh, Ayinswano uh, okay. district. We want to do one there. So we are planning on it. He he has the land, like his uncle has the land over there. So we are both in Accra. So he told me his uncle has a land over there, so he wants us to do that. He didn't even know me, I've started mine already. Mm. So we were talking about it and I told him, me, I've started already. And he was like, hey, then me too, I need to start my own. So he told me his uncle has a land, so we need to gather or like, we need to gather some money, then go and cultivate the land and start to plant something on it. But have you decided what you are going to plant on there? We've decided we want to plant a uh, plantain. Oh, plantain. Plantain okay. and it has a uh, yam. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Plantain and yam. Okay. But from the start there, we will use maize and cassava or like we will mix everything. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, as you said, collaboration is very important. If you don't have the money to start on your own, you can collaborate with someone, someone who has a land. You pump money, you start something small. And you're starting to, you can start on a, on a small scale. When it picks up, then you'd um, expand it. So yeah, uh, this will draw the first part of the video. In the second part, we are going to the farm, the cassava farm, to go and look at it, to check it out. If you also want to learn more about um, growing of coconut, you are going to also look at that in the subsequent video, so you can get to learn more about it. So yeah, please share this video to other people. So people can get to learn, people will be inspired to start something um, educative, um, something on their own at least, something that would help them. You can feed yourself and feed people around you too. So yeah, like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.